Hello everybody, my name is AFHK and welcome to a new series that I'm presenting you. This is called Everlasting Summer, which is, the, which is a, actually a visual novel, which which has reading, not actually playing, with choices, of course. Now, um, I really enjoy playing games like this, especially indie games, but without further ado, let's just jump into it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. <clears throat> I was having that dream once again. That dream. Same thing every night. But it's all forgotten in the morning as usual. Maybe it's for the best. Only a glimpse of memory will remain of gates, half open, as if inviting me somewhere, with two frozen stone pioneers standing close by, and also that strange girl who keeps asking me. <clears throat> will you come with me? Come? But where? And why? And where am I anyway? Of course, if it all happened in real life, I would certainly have been scared. Well, what else would one expect to feel? But this is just a dream. The same one I see every night. There must be a reason. You don't have to know where or why to realize something that really happens. Something desperately seeking my attention. Since everything that surrounds me here is real. As real as things in my own flat, I could open the gates, hear the hinges creak, brush the crumbling rust away with my hand, inhale the fresh cool air and shiver from the cold. I could, but to do that, I would need to pick myself up, take a step, move my hand. But this is a dream, I understand that, but what of it? But what of it? What does my understanding change? Because here, it's just like on the other side of the cracked screen of an old TV, which struggles to fight against static noise and strives to show its audience everything without missing a single detail. But the picture's getting blurry. I must be waking up soon. Hmm. Maybe I should ask her something. The girl. What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? I'd rather ask about the gates. Yes, the gates! She would be so surprised. Or better, why the dot over on I was called a title, but the dot over J was called a superscript dot. Uh, strange. Nice letters. <clears throat> As if they don't exist anymore. Still, what do letters, gates, and stars have to do with this place? Because even if I'm having this dream every night, which will be forgotten soon anyway, I've got to look for answers here and now. And there, if you look carefully, you can see them Magellanic clouds, as if I've ended up in the southern hemisphere. What is this place anyways? In a dream, there are the small things that catch your attention. An unnatural curl of grass, impossible curved straight lines, or your own dis disoriented reflection. While the real danger, which could be put, up, put, uh, put an end to everything right here and now, seems tribal. It's natural since here you cannot die. I know it for sure, I've done it hundreds of times. But if you cannot die, is there a point in living? I should ask the girl. She's a local. She should know. Yes, exactly. I should ask her about the owl, for example. Oh, I noticed the owl on top. <laughs> One strange bird it is. <clears throat> Though it doesn't matter. Will you come with me? And every time I have to answer. It's the only way, otherwise the dream will never end and I will never wake up. Ooh. Decision is decisions. Well, since he's asking me nicely, I guess I'll just come with her. Every time, it's so hard to decide on the answer. Where am I? What am I doing here? Who is she? And why does so much in my life depend on this answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It's just a dream after all. Just a dream. <coughs> okay. Strange dreams, then! This is getting interesting so far. <clears throat> Typing on the computer. <clears throat> I've just moved this, the mouse just to the side so it doesn't bug you guys, don't worry. The hell is he doing? What is that? The computer screen stared at me as if I was alive. 
Sometimes it really did seem to me that it was conscious of itself, had its own thoughts and wishes, ambitions, that it had feelings, could love and suffer. As if in our relationship, the screen wasn't an instrument. It was me who was li a lifeless piece, of, lifeless piece of plastic and textile. There is some truth in that, probably because the computer provides 90% of the communication with the outside world. Anonymous image boards, some chats from time to time, really, ISQ or Jabber, and forms even more r rarely. <clears throat> People on the other end of the internet, cables simply do not exist. All of them are simply creations of a sick imag imagination, an error in the source code, or a kernel bug which started living a life on its own. So is that all you do? Just sit on the computer and chat with other people on the internet. Zero social skills. <clears throat> I looked up at my existence from the outside. Such thoughts would seem crazy and psychologists would surely give me a bunch of uh, sophisticated diagnosis and maybe write me a doctor's referral to the loony bin. Oof. Is this his house tour? A small apartment with no signs of repair or any semblance of order in it, and always the same view out the window on the grey uh, megalo megalopolis running somewhere day and night, such as the conditions of my life. Of my life. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce some words, because they're quite difficult for me. Well, of course, it didn't all start like this. I was born... I was, I was born, went to school and finished it, like all the others. I was accepted at university where I spent a year and a half trailing behind and struggling. I drifted through several jobs. Sometimes I was working out quite well, sometimes I was even getting decent money for it. But it all felt like it was not mine, as if taken from another man's biography. I wasn't living life to, to its fullest. It was looping over and over in monotonous circles, like in the movie Groundhog Day. It's just that I had no choice in how to spend my day, and every day it repeated itself, the same vicious spiral. A spiral of emptiness, misery, and despair. For the last few years, I just sat in front of the screen all day. Ugh, not good. Sometimes there were menial jobs, sometimes my parents helped me. All in all, I was able to provide, my, provide for myself. No wonder really, since my needs are quite minor. I hardly even leave my home, and my communication with other people almost exclusively consists of online correspondence with the anonymous who have no real name, no gender, no age. This is why I said zero social skills! So in brief, a quite typical life of a quite typical and antisocial person of his time. Kind of Donnie Darko on a minor scale without doomsday related visions. Maybe some highly respected author will write a novel about me and it will be cut and it will become a contemporary classic of modern literature or I will write one myself however what's the point of fooling myself I tried many times but couldn't even come up with a simple short story I tried to learn many other things as well not gifted enough to draw programming got bored foreign language takes too much time the only thing I loved doing was reading but still I never would have called myself a sc scholar Perhaps I was an ace at watching anime and grandmaster of lame internet jokes. If I were to get paid for it, I would probably be a happier person, and a richer person too, but I doubt it would fill the hole inside me. Woo! I wonder where that is. Maybe Moscow or somewhere. Today was another typical day of a typical failure's typical life. <laughs> and today is the day when I go to my university reunion. Frankly speaking, I really didn't want to. What is the point? The time I spent with them was too, so short. However, I was persuaded by a friend, my former university mate, and one of the few who I kept in touch other than through the internet. <clears throat> okay. So far, we've been nine minutes for the game. It's going quite well, actually. That must be me, I think. Bust up. 
A frosty evening, bus stop waiting. I never liked winter, though hot summer is not my season either. It's just that I see no reason to point out any particular time of the year. It doesn't matter much what the weather is outside when you stay at home 24 hours. The bus today was running so late that I was about to curse it all and spend my last few hundred rubles for a taxi. The idea of Jad just returning home didn't cross my mind for some reason. As usual, millions of thoughts flew through my mind, but there was not a single useful one to seize me. Such a thought that you could bring into existence, give a shape, turn into an idea, and put it into a practice. Maybe I could start my own business, but where would I get the money from? Or maybe I could go back to working in an office. No, no way! Maybe I should try freelancing. Fr freelancing, sorry. But what skills do I have, and who would want me after all? Yeah, you're right. Who would want you? I suddenly remember my childhood, or rather my teen years, a time when I was 15 to 17 years old. What exactly those years? No idea. I guess it's because back then everything was much more simple. It was easier to make decisions, so complicated now and so simple then. Waking up in the morning, I knew exactly how how my day was going to pass, and always eagerly looked forward to the weekend. Then I could get some rest and have time for things like computer, football, going out with friends. And then at the beginning of the next week, I'd take my studies again. Back then, there was no w such worrying questions like why, who needs it, what will change if I do it, or what will not change. A simple lifestyle so casual for any normal person and so odd to myself today. That careless childhood age, it was also that I I've, I've met my first love. Her appearance and personality have vanished from my memory. Only her name remains like a brief line from a social network profile along the feelings which overwhelmed me when I was with her. Affection, tenderness, the desire to care for her and to protect her. Sadly, it didn't last long. Today, I can hardly imagine something like that happening. I would probably like to meet a girl, but I don't know how to start a conversation. What on earth to discuss and how to track her? Well, I haven't met any suitable girls for a long time. But where could I meet one anyway? Indeed. By the way, guys, I have played this game, but it was quite a long time ago when it on its release date I finished it. The sound of an engine brought me back to re reality. The bus pulled over. There was something abnormal about it, I thought. Then again, it doesn't matter. Only the 410 runs this route. Get in the booth! What strange mysteries await us? I don't really remember much of the game, by the way, guys. Street lights passed me by. It's as if there are cold light sparkles inside of me, trying to ignite feelings long dead. Or maybe not ignite, just waken them. Because those feelings, they have been living in me for a long time, slumbering and waking up again. The driver's radio was playing some f very familiar tune. But I wasn't listening to it. I was watching the cars passing by through the fogged up window. Because people are always rushing somewhere, chasing something they need, stuck in their own little worlds. Why would they... Why would they care about mine? They probably have their own serious problems, or maybe they have much easier lives. You can't know for sure, since all people are different. Or are they? Sometimes someone's actions can easily be predicted, but if you try to look inside his soul, you will only see imper impenetrable darkness. The bus was approaching downtown, and my thoughts were interrupted by the bright city lights. Hundreds of billboards, thousands of cars, millions of people. I watched this light show, and somehow I got terribly sleepy. My eyes closed just for a moment, and then... Whoa! Actually, I can raise the volume a little bit. the intro of the game actually oh god
Uh, okay. Oh. Oh, the hentai ports. Miku! Everlasting Summer, guys. Day number one. We're about to get started. Whew. Right. <clears throat> Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first, I didn't pay attention as I was fully awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Oh, so my name is Semyon. Oh, Semyon. Okay. Damn, looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. But there was no door. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't good, old worn out lies, and said the bus was an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No, I must be dead. I patted myself down f uh, feverishly, slapped myself painfully in the face a few times, banged my forehead on the back of the, of the bus seats. It's clear, either I'm still alive or you can still feel pain while you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for too long and ended up with the bus depot. And then, what? Did they put me in another bus? I rushed out and took a, took a look. Greenery, wherever I look, tall grass on the roadsides, trees, flowers. Summer! But how? It was winter just a moment ago. My head was aching unbearably, as if I was going to explode. Slowly, I began to remember. Hmm. At one moment, it was winter. And the next moment, it was summer. A long road running off in the distance forest, plains, fields, lakes, and forests again. I think I was sleeping, but then how can I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She softly whispered something into my ear. Then the gap again. This keeps getting interesting and interesting. And then I woke up here. Who was that strange girl? Or was it just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then I need to find her. And the best place to look for her is away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, then stopped hissing. Over. Where to go? Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably came. Wow. Power lines. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind, though... Thoughts become clear, and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping breaths in the hot of hot air. In any case, the run did its job. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe I really am just dreaming. Th though, recalling myself harm in the bus, I immediately rejected the idea. I am neither dreaming or nor dead. A narrow road ran through the field and far into the distance. That exact same road from my dream. I must be very far away from home. And it's not just that, it was winter yesterday and it's summer now! It's the whole environment. Of course, summer is usually like this, green and hot, but here everything is not entirely lifelike. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century. The grass is just too lush. The bushes are not like what uh, bushes should be. They are so thick that you can't see anything through them, like treetops, honestly. And the trees themselves. The forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they were had closed their ranks and were now just waiting for the order to advance into the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which was now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear overtook me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. But what does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Couldn't they have power lines here even in hell? Roasting sinners over hot coals. That's... So last century, I must have reached the point of no return after which you can either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I was still ha and why I still have the chance, choice, I should pick up the second option. I slowly headed back to the bus. Of course, it was scary, but I'm not like, but I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or woods on this wretched bucket of bolts. Is the only kind of link that I have with the real world. Ah, the camp entrance. Well, I think, guys, we are going to stop here. So basically, for each episode, it's going to be 20 minutes long. So yeah, got, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like for more. Subscribe, join the AFH Army. And I'll see you all in my next episode. Adios.